Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you to Facebook Prayer tonight and uh, hope and pray that you're having a great evening. We're going to just give a minute for people to get online and, uh, and then we'll get into prayer tonight. Um, again, I want to welcome you and uh, it is always good to be able to be with you. Um, of all of the things that have happened during coronavirus, of all of the changes, many of them uh, have been very, very challenging. Uh, in fact, I would say many of them have been, hello Tosh, uh, hello Tina Lane. Um, many of them have been, I would even say negative. But one of the most uh, positive, unforeseeable things, hello Courtney, I see you sis. Uh, hi from the United States to you, you Canadian, you. Um, but one of the things that has been a blessing has been Tuesday night prayer. Uh, never imagined that God would use it the way God has used it. I've had so many people in uh, the months that we have been doing this, I've had so many people tell me that they have been encouraged, they have been blessed. And I actually think one of the reasons why is because I, I, uh, because these are short um, little sermonettes that we do and then we pray. And uh, I think with everything going on and in people's lives, I don't know how many people have uh, have the, the the patience or the time or whatever to listen to a long sermon. So, I want to minister something to you tonight that uh, I, I actually began to minister on a week ago Sunday morning here at Valley Christian Fellowship, and uh, I never have gotten around to finishing it, but it is something that I have felt um, in my spirit. I felt to share it tonight. Uh, over our prayer time, one of the great realities of the Word of God is warfare. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, I want to talk tonight about God's perfect way. How many know, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you're like me, that that God's perfect way, if he were to ask my permission, uh, it would not be the way I would choose things to do or, or how uh, I would choose th things to go. But in 2 Samuel chapter 22, a verse that has been a life verse for me in many ways. In uh, first Sam or 2 Samuel chapter 22, it says, For by you I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. And, and David is talking about being in the middle of warfare. He's talking about uh, in the middle of a battle and that God would just supernaturally take away uh, his fears and that he would just attack the enemy, climb walls uh, that would expose him to injury, whatever the case is. But then in the next verse, uh, I've never really seen this verse until two weeks ago, but in the next verse, this is what it says. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. God's perfect way is a way of warfare. That's, that's hard sometimes to wrap your mind around. One of the realities of living a Christian life is the reality of warfare. You're not going to change it. You're not going to get around it. It is just one of the realities that we all live with is the reality of warfare. But what I want to talk about tonight is why God allows warfare. Why would God allow warfare in the life of a believer. Why doesn't God just allow somebody to get saved and, and life is easy and they conquer and they just go forward and nothing's ever hard and nothing's ever a trial? There are so many things that happen in warfare. There are so many things that you find out about yourself in warfare. Uh, during coronavirus, to me at least, spiritual warfare has been elevated uh, three or four times above anything I've ever known before. Uh, I, I've, I've been through my share of warfare. I'm sure you have as well. If you are a believer, if you've served the Lord for any amount of time, then you've had your share of warfare. But why would God allow warfare? We're talking, for those of you that are joining us, out of 2 Samuel 22, where it says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Uh, here, here's one of the things that he says here. He says, The word of the Lord is tried. You see, in warfare, whatever promise God has given you, you have to hold on to it. Warfare is the, really the testing, the trying 
of the words and the promises of God that God has given you. And to the degree that you hold on to promises, when the natural world is looking like what God has told you is a lie. Listen, the most common thing the devil uses to discourage or even to defeat the child of God is the natural world, what we see. And God allows the natural world, many times he allows the natural world to seem so opposite, to seem so contrary to what God has promised us. But what God is doing is testing your ability to hold on to the promises of God in the middle of warfare. Listen, because this is, this is what you've got to think about. If you feel like you are called to leadership, God has to test you in small ways. God has to test you in safe ways to see how you're going to respond to testing before your before people are watching you, before you have more and more people that are dependent upon you. Every time you go through warfare, every time, there is something that God is doing in you that will have a bearing on the future. Listen to what it says in verse... Um, in, in, in verse 32, it says, For who is God? Save the Lord. Who is my rock? Save our God. God goes to, God allows you to be put in warfare until the only person you look to is the Lord, until you understand that there's one person and one person alone that has put you in it, can get you out of it, will keep you in it, and that's the Lord Himself. Listen to verse 34, it, or in verse 33, it says, God is my strength. He maketh my, and my power, he maketh my way perfect. Again, he's saying God's way is perfect. The perfect way of God is warfare. Why? Because you have to lean on the strength of God alone. I remember many years ago that I was in a season of great warfare uh, in my own life. And uh, I, I remember that God gave me a verse, and this is the verse he gave me. He gave it to me out of Proverbs where it says, I am strength. And, and I held on to that in that season of warfare. And you're going to go through many seasons of warfare. I want to just deal with you about the things that you war against, I war against. Let me just talk to you about some of them. Number one, the inner man. You, you and I war against things inside of us. Uh, James chapter 4 verse 1 says, From whence comes fighting and wars among you? Come they not even of your own lust that war inside of you? Listen, when we experience warfare and you watch people get angry, you watch people fight, you watch people argue, whatever, what you're seeing is the manifestation on the outside of what's going on on the inside. Number two, you are in a war against the culture. 1 Peter 2.11 talks about how the, the culture itself wars against everything within us. In Luke 12.19, we war against wanting to relax we get tired sometimes, and we just want to relax. Listen to this. It says, I will say to my soul, soul, you have laid up much goods for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Listen, so many of us want to just relax. We want to just relax. We're tired of, we get tired of warfare. But I'm going to tell you something. You need to fight that. I need to fight that. Why? Because God wants us to push forward. There are things in our future that we need to push forward to. The last thing the Bible says is we want to, we fight against the desire to give up. This is Psalm 42, five. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. You and I will war against this part of us that just wants to give up. I don't know about you. I am not naturally emotionally strong. I don't have like, natural fight, natural determination in me. I've really had to cling to the Lord to get that. But there are times that I just want to quit. I just, uh, it's not that I want to quit serving God. I just want to have a good life. I just want to, I figure I've got enough things to, to fight in my own family and whatever the case is. And sometimes I fight just wanting to quit. But going back to this truth, why would God, why would God's perfect way be in warfare? There are so many things that happen in a man or woman's life in warfare. Listen, warfare reveals. In the, in the story of Gideon, the Bible says that God gave him at the beginning 20,000 men. And, when, and, and the Bible says that God told Gideon, let everybody that is fearful, and it didn't mean that it meant everybody was fearful, 
but there were 10,000 of those men that their fears overcame their desire to fight. And he said, send them home. And then after that, he said, take them down to a river. And they were all thirsty. They'd been marching all day. Take them down to a river and watch them. And he said, the people that are so thirsty that they forget keeping their eye on the enemy, they forget who they are, they forget what they're doing, they forget what they're called to do, they're overwhelmed by the need inside of them, send them home. But the ones that go down to the river and they bring the water to their mouth and they keep their eye on what's in front of them and they remember what they're called to do, those are the men that you want. You see, warfare reveals. I've known so many people, I've watched so many people come to know Christ. I've watched so many people get saved and But warfare is what reveals. Warfare is what separates, if you will. Warfare separates people, and, and, and it brings to the surface some of your own battles, some of your own struggles. Um, let me just say this out of uh, 2 Samuel twenty two thirty, It says, By thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. When David got into warfare, David became selfless. David became a man that didn't worry about getting injured. He didn't worry about all of these natural fears. He became like an animal. I mean, this man became uh, supernaturally disconnected from self or worried about self or worried about injury. Listen, warfare subtly changes you. Uh, you, you watch people that have endured warfare and they come out of it differently. There are scars, yes. There are battles, yes. But warfare quietly and sometimes imperceptibly changes men and women of God. And you would, allow, you would ask yourself, God, why are you allowing warfare in my life? Because warfare does this in us when we don't even realize what warfare is doing. Listen to this. Warfare changes who you chase. In Judges chapter 1, the Bible says there's, there's these men and they're trying to invade a city. And they watch a man come out of that city and begin to run. And they begin to chase him. And when they chase him, they tackle him. And they say, listen, tell us how to get inside of this city. Listen, see, warfare will change who you chase. Before warfare, we change people or we chase people that maybe we just like or are popular or whatever. But when you're in warfare, you start to chase people that can tell you and give you answers. You start to chase people that can tell you how to conquer. You start to chase people that can tell you how. Man, if that isn't true. Warfare will make you listen to people you used to ignore. Listen, the people that I began to pay attention to in my ministry changed as I endured warfare. When I started, I was proud, arrogant, young, uh, snappy, snotty, pride, whatever. But as I endured warfare, I began to listen to people. I began to chase people that I had never chased before. I began to chase people that I believed could give me answers. They may not have been the most powerful preacher or the most uh, flamboyant one, but they were people that had answers. Listen to this. Uh, warfare is needed in some people in order to reach other people. In 1 Kings chapter 20, this is such a powerful truth. In 1 Kings chapter 20, there is a, there is a prophet that wants to speak to a king. And that king has just been through warfare. He has just been through a battle. He is scarred. He is wounded. And this prophet goes to a man and he says, smite me. And the man says, I'm not going to hit you. And the Bible says that he moved on. He found a man and he said, hit me. And the man began to punch him. And you would look at that story and say, why in the world is that story in the word of God? I'll tell you why. Because that prophet knew that that king would not listen to him unless he had been through warfare. You see, you go through warfare because there's people that will not listen to you unless you have been through warfare. There's people that won't pay attention to you because there's a voice inside of your voice. Your spirit picks up things with people. Your spirit knows when you're talking to somebody that has been through their share of battles. Your spirit, that you're, there's something within you that hears within them when you've been through warfare. And they've been through warfare. And there's something that connects with you with them. Hear me. This man understood 
that I, I, I look back over my life. I look back over my life and it has been my warfare that gave me uh, an opportunity. It opened the door with so many people. I just talked to a young man just today. I talked to a young man that called me going through something in his life and I reflected clear back to the first three or four years I was saved and I was able to minister to him out of something I had been through. And I'm telling you, when I was going through it, I thought, why in the world would God allow this? I thought my marriage was being destroyed. I thought our family was being destroyed. I wondered why in the world would God allow this to happen? But I'm gonna tell you something. I was able to minister to this young man out of my own experience. You see, warfare is what changes people. Listen, in David's life, the Bible says warfare taught him to wait on God. It taught him to perceive what God was saying to him. He didn't just rush out and do something. The Bible says in one particular war uh, battle that God told him, wait until you hear the sound of marching over the mulberry trees and then go forward. You see, warfare teaches you to not do everything. It teaches you to not launch out on your own and just do what you want. Hear me, because whatever is God's will is hard enough, but getting into something that isn't God's will is altogether different. Warfare teaches you, it teaches you to not just do everything that comes to your mind. It teaches you to wait on God. It teaches you, listen, it teaches you there are people at stake with what you say and what you do. When you have warfare, when you go through warfare because of something you've said you shouldn't have said or something you've done you shouldn't have done, you will remember, listen, you will remember that there are people in the balance of what you say and what you do. I want to tell you something. If you're in warfare, it is not a bad thing. Listen, God is preparing you. I have said this to our church for the last four months. Coronavirus is going to give some people platforms there's going to be leaders come out of coronavirus nobody knew before. People are going to be elevated and people are going to go down. I think there's churches going to be built and I think there's churches going to be lost. I believe there's people right now that in coronavirus, they are being equipped, they are being prepared, they are being changed, they are being, uh, they are being tried, they are being tested. Some people are being refined, but God is using this season. This has been one of the most difficult seasons for my wife and I, we have ever known as leaders. But there's something in me, there is something in me that every time I really get down, there's something in me that God convinces me there is something coming out of this for the people of God. If you will hold true, if you will hold true, I, I guarantee you something is coming out of this for you. Let me just give you one last thing. When you're in warfare, it makes you cry to the Lord. The Bible says in one particular story in 2 Chronicles chapter 13 and verse 14 that there is a particular king and before he got into warfare, he was kind of a here and there follower of God, but he got into warfare and the Bible says he thought he was going to be killed and he cried unto the Lord. And I'll tell you something, warfare, warfare changes your prayer life. Warfare changes the way you pursue there's, there's seasons of my life I just prayed. If you're a, a Christian, you know what I mean. I just prayed. And then there's times I prayed. And warfare, many times, is what changed and made all of the difference. When I was in warfare, it pushed me to really cry out to the Lord. I can't tell you how many answers have come because of warfare, that warfare drove me to the presence of the Lord. Let me give you one last thing and I'm going to close. In verse 35, it says, He teaches my hands to war so that I might, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Hear this. You don't know, you, you may think you know how to fight, but the laws of spiritual warfare are different than the laws of natural warfare. For instance, God doesn't allow you to defend yourself all the time. God doesn't allow you to speak all of the time. Warfare changes the way you fight. It changes the way you deal with life. Listen, you are taught many things in warfare. You're taught how to fight as a man or woman of God, not as a, not as a carnal, not as a fleshly person. You're taught how to fight the way God wants you to fight. So listen, I'm going to take prayer requests really quick. 
Um, I, I, I want you to pray about some things that are personal to our church. Um, we are praying about starting a Christian school, and uh, we could, we ask you, would ask you to pray about that. Please pray about that. Pray about whether or not it is God's will for us to start a Christian school. Um, man, I, I've just been in constant prayer about it and uh, thinking about it even before we came on uh, line tonight uh, about praying about it again this week and really truly getting the mind of the Lord about it. It's a huge decision. Please pray about that. Uh, pray about people that are in warfare. I want to make a, a personal request. My sister Trina um, is uh, fighting what she believes to be terminal cancer. Talked to her last night and uh, she I prayed with her. I don't know if she's watching tonight or will watch this later. But my sister's name is Trina. I asked her if I could uh, put this prayer request out to everybody. And uh, she is probably in a fight for her life and probably needs a miracle. And uh, so pray for my sister Trina. Pray for our nation, obviously. Pray for uh, all of our leaders. Our, our leaders are in tremendous amount of uh, need of prayer. Pray for our churches. I was listening to uh, a man today talking about the wars that's going on even in our churches, the debate going on about uh, how to handle this, how to, how to deal with this, what to do, what not to do, how far to go, how far not to go. Uh, there is a great war. There's a great fight even within uh, churches. That's why some churches have chose not to even open up because it's just complicated. But we have opened up. We're going to stay open. And uh, we're going to we're going to choose to uh, fight forward. So anyway, let's go to prayer. Father, we come before you in the amazing name of your Son Jesus, and we ask tonight, Lord, that you would war on our behalf. You're the ultimate. You are the warrior. You are you are our great warrior. You are the one that fights on behalf of every one of your children. We ask tonight, God, that you would fight for this nation. We know as believers, we know there's never been an attack against this country in my lifetime, even close to what we're dealing with right now. We ask that you would roll back spirits of darkness that would like to destroy and change this nation and, and make it completely different than what you intended it to be. God, we come against those things in the spirit world. We ask you tonight to roll back the forces of darkness. We believe that if your people that are called by your name will humble themselves and pray that you will answer. Lord, I pray for everybody watching tonight. I pray for the war. I pray for people that will watch. I pray for the warfare they're enduring. I pray for sickness and disease. I pray for people that are in fear. I pray, I pray for people that are in emotional problems. God, we ask you to move in a mighty way. We ask for our leaders tonight, God. We ask for our governor, we ask for our president, senators, congressmen. God, we ask you to move on their minds and on their, on their hearts. And God, that they would make decisions according to your mind. We ask tonight that you would influence them, Father. We ask for you to put an end to this awful disease. God, we ask for you to smite it from our country. God, may it be destroyed by your power. May it be done in a way that people know it's you. God, we ask you tonight for the healing of cancer in my sister Trina, Lord. God, I ask you for the same miracle you gave my mother. God, I spoke that to her last night. I ask you for the same miracle that you gave my mother. I pray for all those that need healing, all those that are fighting disease. I pray for people that are in fear tonight, that you would bring peace and comfort to their life. We give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being with me. We will, of course, uh, have prayer again next Tuesday night, 6.30. Uh, if you did not catch all of this, you can go back and uh, I'll post it. You can go back and re-listen to it. And uh, Lord bless you. Keep you. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Bye-bye.